So I'd like to talk about inspiring the young in, terms, in the context of what we did in Malaysia. Now, I was tasked to set up the National Space Agency of Malaysia some 16 years ago. Um, because we had a visionary prime minister who thought that if we were to become a developed nation by 2020, we could not ignore space. And so I had engaged many organizations, many people, uh, to talk about the future of Malaysia in space. And I realized that as far as the media and the public was concerned, they were not interested in satellites. They were not interested in uh, rockets, but they wanted to see and a Malaysian astronaut in space. And so we thought, I mean, so I had a discussion with the Prime Minister how we should handle this, and we thought that there should be a special focus on, uh, on youth, and that would be about uh, youth striving for excellence and believing in a dream. Uh, this was the focus of uh, the astronaut program. We called it the Angkasawan program. Angkasawan just means space person. And uh, the, the objectives were so that the youth were uh, exposed to new science, new technology, and that. And this was very important for a country, a multicultural, uh, multiracial country like Malaysia. And that was to foster unity of purpose and to inculcate a sense of identity. As I said, we are multicultural, uh, multi ethnic, multiracial uh, society, as some of you will know. And because the launch was supposed to be in the 50th anniversary of our independence, we thought it would also be great to uh, position it as a leap in mindset um, of the public. And so we, set, we uh, had a call for applications uh, in around about 2003, and there were 11,000 candidates. It's a long story on how we cut the, the 11,000 to four and then two. But anyway, uh, more than half, I think about three quarters of them, were under 30 years old, which really convinced us that this was a program for young people. And we carried out several, several aspects of the program. One of us was, of course, to tell youth this about physical fitness, medical fitness. But overall, we also talked about the, the science. We had some science experiments. We worked with the European Space Agency, NASA, uh, Russia, Japan. Um, and of course, that brought us to the international collaboration. But what was also important that we tell the young people um, as um, you know all the thousands of nasa videos that what is the science in space now another uh, thing that we wanted to focus on was the culture and because it was the fasting month of uh, when the astronaut was in space we talked about um, how do you carry out uh, how do you fast in 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 space, uh, lots of interesting issues there. I wouldn't uh, deal with that. But also, what do you eat in space? Um, what do you wear in space? So all of that was uh, of deep uh, cultural interest to all of Malaysians. Uh, I'm trying to uh, cut time as much as possible. And then, so this is a picture of our astronaut, Shem Muzaffar, who's on the left. Pam knows him. And there's Peggy Whitson on the right, who became the first female commander of uh, the ISS. Um, so, so now let me address uh, the future um, of space uh, for the young people. The future, you know, I normally don't care about being young again, but you know, with all that's happening, I sometimes wish I had the opportunity, uh, you know, to be young again, because there we're talking about, this is, uh, for those of you who have seen this, this is a picture of what Elon Musk sees as the um, colony, the habitation uh, on Mars, maybe even up to a million people, imagine that. And of course, the um, it's about, uh, us generating power in space. This is a solar plant in space. Um, the future also is about asteroid mining. We've also heard uh, people allude to this. And it's a quadrillion, trillion, I, I don't know, people are talking about gazillions of dollars that can be made. I don't know, but uh, it is a good thought because then people will start investing in space. Mm, even talking about elevators, space elevators, Arthur C. Clarke idea of uh, space elevators, and then the space tourism. And then on top of that, which I think will be the most um, uh, transformational thing of all, is that if we found life 
in space, uh, whether it's bacterial or maybe aliens. Um, but uh, we find if you can find life in space, that will have a deep impact on uh, religion, culture, philosophy, um, and that I think this for for the young. So there was a study done to see what. What, what do you need in terms of your skills and what are the jobs of the future in space? Now, the space is rife, actually, for future of jobs. Imagine being a geologist on the moon, um, a nurse in the orbiting station looking after some aging patient, or a lawyer on Mars. Those are the jobs that are, don't exist yet, but they will um, in the future. But, uh, of course, the, the conventional wisdom is also, also that um, we need to have our young involved in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, but increasingly, uh, the social science and humanities are important. We've got space lawyers, um, and I said other things, uh, other professions that will be important to our habitation of um, ex um, extra solar planets. Um, that that I think is uh, very, very exciting. But in terms of the soft skills, um, what do they see? I mean, they, was, uh, they were asked if they were to employ somebody in their industry, um, what kind of uh, attributes were they looking at? Uh, number one was cultural empathy, and this is uh, reasonable because any cultural, uh, any space um, endeavor is going to be an international endeavor, and therefore cultural emp empathy was important. And then again, if you're going to build this fancy satellite or fancy whatever, you have to sell it, you have to market it, and therefore that business acumen was also important. As usual, innovation and creativity and well-roundedness. And if you could play guitar like Chris Hadfield, I mean, he did for space more than you know many many astronauts before and after him. So I would close by saying that the future belongs to the young. I'm sorry, guys, the guys who look like me. The future belongs to the, to the young. But in space, especially, it belongs to the young who are smart, of course, uh, culturally culturally adept, and like Pam. Completely fearless. Thank you. Thank you.